Good morning. Welcome to a chilly day in Connecticut. I just picked up this 1965 V-Line self-contained camper yesterday. Got it up in the Catskills from a really, really cool guy named Brian. So if you're ever out buying a camper from a guy named Brian in the Catskills, he's a good guy for sure, trustworthy. Um, he buys and sells, a couple of fixes them up. This one I think he had for about a year and it was stored in a barn. And it looks like by the condition of it, it'd been stored for most of its life. It's what, 53 years old at this point. Uh, one of the things that really impressed me was all the, the windows and the seams. Um, really nothing could be done with that at this point. All the tags are there. So this is gonna be just a polishing job on the outside. So, I figured I'd make a series of videos all winter. I purchased this really in January, and uh, now it's April. I just picked it up. So my winter project was finding things for the camper, hooking up a 12-volt system, I have to rework the propane. So a couple things to do, but I've been watching YouTube videos all winter, really learning a lot and really appreciating that people uh, post and post videos and teach People that are relatively new to things like this for me. Um, this side I did clean up a little bit yesterday. I just washed it and uh, the tires and the, the what are they called? Half domes. Uh, it's going to clean up really nice. And you can't tell probably, but the back has got crushed. It was four inches of snow in the Catskills yesterday, April 7th. And then back here in Connecticut, everything was cool. Yeah, so this side is uncleaned at this point. Um, so I hope to post a series of videos uh, as I kind of work out different systems um, and uh, maybe somebody will learn what not to do for me. <laughs> so anyway, let's take a quick peek inside. Um, here I do have a couple pieces of trim I'll be installing at some point. Um, he gave them to me. They go along the bottom here that needs to be uh, riveted on. And then the two corners, the, the, the right-hand corner, this is fine, but over here you can tell um, there's a little piece of trim that I, he gave me that I need to finish up that corner and the rear corner in the same. And this morning I was online checking out the propane systems and um, regulators and all that. So this old regulator here I'm going to toss. It looks like it's had its time. Uh, the, the, uh, what do they call them? The hoses are pretty stiff and, and they don't have the uh, friendly big knobs like the new ones do. So, um, you know, the line's running from the camper and I'll just buy a new regulator with the dual and it has a switch on it. I think it was like $41 or $50 for a, a new regulator. It's supposed to last about 10 years. The tray and the, the post, you know, a little chewy, but I can clean that up. I'll use that. I think they were like $30 for a a new tray and post, but this one's attached pretty well, so yeah, I'm not going to bother with that. Um, that's it. Outside the water, so here's the water fill up. And I believe, I have to test this out, but here it runs off a of pressure. So there's not a pump in it, but it's a pressurized tank inside. I'll show you that in a second. And I guess if you hook up to city water, you'd use that pressure. Um, and just unscrew it if you want to fill up the tank and use um, there's a bicycle pump that he left in there. Um, this is the kitchen vent over the stove. And then a nice storage that goes across the whole back for chairs or hoses or extension cables, stuff like that. Uh, but in general, it's good. The glass is good. Let's take a look inside. So hopefully this works. Uh, the doors are all in really good shape, the wood, um, original linoleum floor, it's probably asbestos, so we'll leave it alone. And then, uh, as you can see, you're stepping back in a time capsule here, all beautiful birch wood. It's all really in good shape. Very, very few signs of any water damage over time. Here's the uh, example of campers only came with 110 or propane. So there was no 12 volt battery system back then. So that's a 110 lamp underneath here. And then 
that is the uh, propane lantern that actually uses like a Coleman mantle. Um, so we'll get that fired up at some point in the future. And the table, it's funny, my wife and I were out here having a inaugural glass of wine. It's a little little tight on the, the left-hand side to squeeze by. It's kind of trying to maybe redo that table. Um, that's good for Micah, but uh, maybe we can do something different with that in the future. Um, Got to figure out where to put a TV eventually. I'm thinking maybe this corner over here so somebody could sit to the left and view it or if you're in the back of the camper back here maybe a 19 or 22 inch nothing too overwhelming so if you're five foot two and a hundred pounds this little Lou is fine uh, I'm a little bigger than that <laughs> so might be good for just a tinkle now and then but other than that probably won't use this room much I think they even had like a little coat closet thing going on so, it's clean anyway, so we'll do that. And then we have the uh, furnace, which we'll give a try eventually. And the Panasonic um, refrigerator, it doesn't look original. It would be nice to find an original that even fits a little bit better than that one, but that one's certainly gonna suffice. Lots of little storage, so the buttons have these little push, push plastic buttons. This seems like adequate storage everywhere. And then I was thinking of replacing the roof vent. <coughs> Excuse me. But this one's in decent shape and it actually kind of screws up. Sorry for the horrible video here. But you kind of just screw these two sides up and um, it's gonna be a vent. So I don't know if I can get a fan in there, but I'd like to keep that original. I think that's actually pretty cool. <coughs> Excuse me. Three burner stove. Um, We'll give that all a test once I get the propane going on. Um, little sink, we'll test the water. But it's all really, really clean. And then back here, there's two more beds. Well, here's a big coat closet here. So, a lot of storage in there. You could put shelves, who knows what. And there's a big storage there. And then back here, um, two more sleeping areas actually. So it's a sofa. I think they call it a gaucho or something, but you can see you pull this piece out and it's going to turn into a nice full size bed, you know, the whole length here. And it's uh, seven foot wide, the camper. And then up here, I can't prop this thing, but you basically have another bed here. You lift, you lift up this top piece and there's a mattress, basically unused, matches the camper. And I think it's been in the up position for 50 years. So, um, but that folds down all the way to these rails here. And it's probably a twin size, to be to be fair. So anyway, that's what's going on in here. And now I want to show you. Well, actually, when I do the 12 volt, because under this under this uh, bench here, because that's the outside, um, that's where there's a, a water tank underneath. I think it's like 20 gallons, maybe bigger. And then I'm going to try to put the 12 volt system in there. And under this bench is a hot water heater, it runs off the propane. I don't think I'm going to need hot water, so I'm not going to take it out, but I don't really anticipate doing much with it either. And there will be a little bit more storage on this side of the bench. So, we'll work on that table, and that's about it. So, hope you like the first tour of my new 1965 Beeline, and uh, I'll take you with me as we... Uh, do other projects. Okay, thanks. Bye.